now that we know that, that waves can add, um, we can add waves that bounce back and forth. You know, if you send a wave down from one side to another, it's going to reflect. And when it reflects, if I send another wave, the reflecting wave will interfere with the incident wave. And they'll add just according to superposition. Now, if I, if I do it like this, I don't get anything. But at some point, I can get something called a resonance right there. So what's happening is, either of my hands, they're pretty much nodes. And what I'm doing is, I'm sending a wave in one direction, and it is balancing. Or it's, or it's coming back, and it's matching the wave that's returning. So the incident and the returning fa uh, waves are in phase with each other. And so I get something called resonance. You notice that all the power in this, let me get started in here. All the power in the wave is right in the middle. What I've done is I've stuck a half a wave in this distance between my hands, right? You can see it's just half a wave. Now if I go faster, I don't get anything because there, I don't get constructive interference, but at some point I get it so now I've got constructive interference again. And now you can see I've got an entire wave in here. So this is called the second harmonic. And now the nodes and the anti-nodes are really easy to see. You can go even higher. I don't know if I can, but you can. Okay, there's the third harmonic. That's a wave and a half. So I went from a half a wave to a full wave to a wave and a half. You notice that I have to increase my frequency. As you increase the frequency, that shortens the period and makes the wavelength shorter, too. I don't know if I can get four. Eh, maybe not. That would have been two waves. So what happens is, as my frequency gets higher, my period gets shorter, and so do the waves. And I can fit a wave. Once I can fit a half a wave in that distance between my hands, I resonate. Now, once I can fit a whole wave, I resonate again. Higher harmonics. It looks like this. These are fixed ends, so they're nodes. And all I have to do is make sure that there are nodes right there. So the first way I can get one node in is for half a wave. And you see, if I continue that wave, that'll be a whole wave. So my wavelength here is twice the length of the distance between my hands. Now the next way I can stick a node in there, I don't see there's one node, there's two, there's my third node. Second harmonic, I fit exactly one wave in. The next time I can fit a, a node in, one, two, three, right there. So I've got two thirds of a wave. I fit a wave and a half in there. And finally, I get another node in, my wavelength is, is going to be actually my wavelength is going to be half the distance between my hands, L over two. Now, sounds different. For sound waves, if you want to, you can resonate them in a tube, in a hollow tube. Hollow plastic tube works just fine. But what I have to do for sound waves. If I have a fixed note and I bounce something back, it's going to return the same way. But if I do it, if I do it on an unfixed note, if, if it can slide up and down, it's going to return out of phase. It turns out that to have a standing wave in an open sound tube like this, then what I have to do is I have to fit the anti notes at either end. So for a sound wave, for an open tube, if I can fit uh, a half a wave in here. See, it's the same thing. It's still a half a wave I'm putting in. It's just the anti notes at either end. I got my first harmonic. If I can increase the frequency, go to my second harmonic, that's when I get short enough waves, high enough frequency to get an entire wave in that area. So the resonance of the sound tube creating, is from creating a standing wave, and it depends on the length of the tube, and that determines the, the wavelength, the resonating wavelength. Here again, I've got uh, one and a half waves in here, so the length, wavelength is two thirds of the tube, and finally I wind up with uh, a wavelength that's half, half the length of the tube. So I fit two wavelengths in there. But all it is is just finding out, you know, here how I can get a note at the end, or here how I can get an anti-note at the end. 
Well, let's calculate. Let's do a sample calculation for a sound wave. You've seen it with a slinky. So let's say. Uh, Let's say I've got a sound wave, and you get a sound wave by producing harmonic motion or multiple harmonic motions uh, with your throat, your vocal cords, uh, and you make sounds. It's, it's a series of high pressure and low pressure regions that move through the air at about uh, 330 meters a second. That's like 10 football fields every second. So let's see, three. So the speed of sound. I call the speed of sound V sub S, and it's about 330 meters per second. And let's say I've got a tube that's uh, that's um, 66 centimeters long, and it's about 66 centimeters long. Well, maybe like a little further to scale. And I want to know. What's the second harmonic frequency that'll fit in there? So let's say, let's call that F2. Now remember, for the second harmonic frequency, that's right here. I can fit one wavelength inside the tube. So I need a wavelength that's 66 centimeters. So lambda 2 the second harmonic wavelength is equal to the, the length of the tube, which is 66 centimeters. Now the speed of sound is frequency times wavelength. And this is the second harmonic frequency and the second harmonic wavelength. If I solve for this frequency, I just divide both sides by the wavelength, lambda. So the second harmonic frequency is going to be the speed of sound divided by the second harmonic wavelength, which would be 330 meters per second, divided by 66 centimeters. I'll call that 0 0.66 meters. I can do that. One meter per 100 centimeters. 0 0.66 meters. And that's going to be, let's see, 50. I think that's going to be 50. Should be 500 hertz. Whew, right on. All right. And that's meters per second divided by meters. So I got per second, but I know it's cycles per second. And a cycle per second is a hertz. This is akin to, I never get it right, but somewhere around, uh, that's about 500 hertz. And that's, uh, that's how you determine the second harmonic. You could do the same to the third, the fourth, or any harmonic of the wave. Standing waves are very important for isolating energy and, and the phenomena of resonance, since every different object uh, requires different wavelengths to form a standing wave. And they'll resonate with that. And when you do resonate, then all your energy goes is isolated in a couple of places. When you swing a baseball bat, for example, the two ends are fixed, and the middle, it's not exactly a symmetric wave because the barrel is wider, and so the, the peak, the antinode, is out towards what would they call the sweet spot. So when you hit the bat, when you hit the ball with the bat right on the sweet spot, then you're hitting it right on the antinode, and you're getting a standing wave, and that's why you don't feel anything in your hands when you, when you hit the ball, because your hands are right at the node. When you don't hit right on the sweet spot, you don't get a standing wave and everything shakes, and it hurts.